it's a beautiful day today pretty windy as you can see the trees in the background are swaying a bit quite noisy I guess and this type of windiness happens to Melbourne as we approach summer especially during summer the light levels are changing a lot as the clouds are being swept by the winds but at this point I'll take windy over scorching hot we're just a few weeks away before the official start of summer and because of that it's worth pointing out that my winter dormant plants like the echeveras are actively growing right now they're showing lots and lots of growth so in this episode we're going to have a look at my recent propagations especially echeverias and see their progress <laughs> first off let's look at echeverias that i chopped a month ago and let's see if they've grown any roots since then So here's the five mature echeveras that I gave the chop back in episode 85. This one is the Echeveria caranculata, Big Red, Pastel, Red Sapphire, and Blondie. And seeing that this is supposed to be episode 94, that means that it has been about 9 weeks since then. And surely there must be some development since then, right? So let's flip them over and have a look underneath. First up is the Red Sapphire. And I can see some roots here. And a tiny spider. Hi. And right off the bat, you can see that this mature echeveria seem to have shrunk. This is pretty much expected when you're beheading mature echeverias. It's not shrinkage per se, it's more of the lower leaves are being shed off and there has not been enough growth at the top at this side to overtake the loss of leaves, especially since right now they're just trying to grow roots. So until they have a well-established root system, this will continue to shrink and the growth rate of the younger leaves might not be enough to overcome the loss of the lower leaves but seeing that it's now growing season for them we should see a reverse of that trend really soon so let's flip them over this is the red sapphire and it looks like it has some roots now which means that i should start watering it pretty soon there's not enough space for the stump so i might have to remove some of the lower leaves that way it would be a lot easier for me to plant it next up is this blondie and as you can see it has lots of roots now I guess it owes this type of growth to its color because it's green which means that it has the most amount of chlorophyll which also means that among all of these plants this would be producing the most amount of food for itself which also explains why it is currently the largest from among the bunch. Back when I started all of them except for the caranculata were a lot larger than the blondie. It seems that the blondie didn't shrink as much as the rest of them. Up next is this big red. There doesn't seem to be lots of growth here yet although if i look really hard there's a bit of red here and that means that there's going to be some roots coming out of here really soon so i might have to hold off for a few more weeks before i set it in a pot and start watering it next up is this pastel as you can see in the center it's quite green which means that it is growing now does that mean that it has roots let's find out yes i was right it does have roots, lots of them in fact. So now that it has roots, it's now focusing its growth onto the tips. So compared to the red sapphire, which only has a few roots, the leaves and the growing tip aren't as green as this one. So this is looking really good. I can set it in the pot now and start watering it. And finally, we're having a look at this caranculata. As you can see, the middle leaves, the upper leaves are not green. And they're still tiny, which means that there's not enough growth on it. Ergo, I think it doesn't have a well-established root system yet. So let's flip it over and verify. And yes, I was right. No roots yet. It might be a while before it starts growing roots. So I'm going to keep it like this in a dry spot until it starts showing roots. So it appears that some of them have grown roots while others didn't yet. So I'm going to separate them into two groups. The rooted ones right here and the unrooted ones over at the left side. I'm going to plant this tree now. This ones I'll leave it as is in those type of pots, just open air. As you can see there's no soil underneath. So I'll leave them that way until they start growing lots of roots. As for this tree, I'm going to find a suitable container for them. Right now as you can see, this pot is too small for them, at least small for the rosette. 
Although in terms of roots, they should work for them because their roots won't be constricted yet. They're still growing the roots anyway. So I guess this should be alright for now. Unfortunately, placing them in a small pot like this one means that I would have to water them from below because it would be hard to get the water into the soil if I water them from above. There's no way you could push it right into the soil. So given that I'm the type of person who likes just showering them from above, I think I'll get larger pots for these plants. I'll have a look at my stash. Here's three pots for three plants. Should be big enough. Yeah, big enough. I'm going to remove some of the lower leaves just to give me a better anchor for the lower stem. And I'll be planting them now. I finally got them in the pots and I'll set them aside. I'm going to place them back where I got them, which is somewhere near the fence, where they are getting enough sun. They're flush against the western fence on our property, which means that they're getting morning sun till noon. So you guys are going back now. Now that we have dealt with the heads, it's time to have a look at the stumps. Now here, you're looking at the prize. This is the reason why I did the chops in the first place, because I wanted to grow all of these pops. As you can see on all of the stumps on the table, they all have pups growing along their stem. Some of them are large, some not so much. They are at varying stages of growth right now. But the important thing is, it's growing season and they're gonna love it. This one right here at the far back, this is the red sapphire and I've been wanting to propagate this for the longest time now. Because it's one, it seems to be one of the slow growing but really large type of release. The red sapphire is a solitary cultivar which means that it does not produce pups as much as the others. And for all those years that it has been in my collection, it has never given me a pup. So I'm really stoked that finally after doing the head chop, I see new growths here. This next one here is an Echeveria embossed gem. There's one large pup here. It was already there around the time that I chopped off the head, but I left it here. Because that way, at least, it has access to the main stem and to the roots of the main stem. And I think most of the size growth that you see here happened during the, the past few weeks. Especially now that it's getting a bit warmer. So yeah. Apart from that, there's several other pups growing around the stem. So far, I'm seeing five small pups, but I'm hoping that more will grow as the days go by. This one right here is the Arley Wright. I think I can consider this one of the more successful head chops. Just looking at the stem, I can count about eight pups and they are all looking really green, which means that they're growing happily. They are not stressed in any way. I'm really looking forward towards the end of summer. By then, they would be large enough and I could pluck them from the stem and let them grow their own roots. Of course, I'm going to leave them on the stump for as long as I can because that's the way that they'll be growing at the fastest rate, which also means that I would be maximizing the time that they have this growing season. This right here is the stump of the Echeveria Pastel. Right now, I'm seeing just one pup over here, but I'm hoping that in the next few weeks, it's going to start pushing out pups along the stem. It might just be slow compared to the others. But we'll see. Right here, this is the stump of Echeveria Carampolata. And as it stands right now, I see one pup. There might be others growing out really soon. But so far, it has only pushed one. Personally, I think as long as at least one pup has come out, then it was worth my time. And I hope that it is just a late grower, like the pastel. This is the stump of the Blondie. And as you can see, there's lots of pups around here. And like the Arli right? This one has lots of growth as well. I can count about nine of them so far, and I'm expecting more to come out in the weeks to come. Yeah, another success story here. This stump at the front is the big red, and at the moment, I count two pups at the front. And that isn't so bad. It's still better than my minimum requirement of one pup, so it was still worth the time chopping off the head. And finally, this is the stump of my Echeveria Barbellion, and I can see that there are four pups growing here. They all look dark green, which is a good thing because that means that they're quite healthy. I'm going to leave them here until they grow a bit more. And maybe in a few months, I will get to detach them because by then they would be so large and they would no longer fit 
along the stem. And I guess the next question here is, Chuck, when is the right time to pluck them out of the stem and place them in their own pots? In my case, it's a very arbitrary criteria. What I do is I have a look and see if they're pushing against each other already. Because once they're pushing against each other, there's going to be a bit of stunting of the growth. Rather than them growing outwards, they would be growing to one side and they would be deforming. That in itself is not really a problem yet. But as they grow older, as their stems grow longer, and they deform even more, you'll be running into a risk of the stems breaking off. Now imagine if this was a stem and it, it, is, it keeps getting pushed this way. Eventually, it's going to droop all the way down or whichever direction away from the other plant. Which means that at the bend, it might end up corking or rotting or atrophying, becoming smaller. And that means it will not be getting enough nourishment or nutrients for the parent stem. So I try to avoid that issue by letting them grow on their own roots. But I do not do that unless they satisfy another criteria. In which case, I would have a look at their stems. I would really prefer for them to have thick stems like this one. That way, I could be sure that they would be able to sustain themselves and they would be able to sustain the shock of being transplanted. If you pluck them too young and their stems haven't fully developed yet, then you would need to be a lot more careful with their growing conditions. Make sure that they do not dry out too often. Make sure that they do not get more water than they need. You know, it's going to be a delicate balance. I'm a person who likes to keep things really simple. So I wait for the stems to get a bit of girth to them, be really thick. And that's the time that I would consider separating them from the main stalk. Another question you might have is, do you need to fertilize at this point? Maybe, if you want to, yeah. But keep in mind that right now it's their growing season, at least in my climate. I'm in Australia and our seasons are reversed compared to the Northern Hemisphere. As you guys in the Northern Hemisphere are going into winter, we are heading to summer. It's getting quite warm. In fact, just this week, we had multiple days of over 30 degrees Celsius. I wonder how much that is in Fahrenheit. I think it's in the 90s, probably around there. So our days are getting pretty warm. Our nights are still cold. We're still getting in the 10 degrees range, maybe around 40, 50 Fahrenheit. So the temperature range is still pretty crazy. This is probably the reason why some of the heads we saw earlier do not have roots yet, because they're confused whether it's already warm or it's still cold. Because we keep getting cold nights together with the warm days that we've been getting lately. So yeah, it might be confusing for them. And now that we've briefly touched on when to remove the pops from the stem, let me show you a little side project that I did. Here's a little pop mandala that I worked on. I grabbed all of these pops from my Echeveria plants. Because these little pops are pushing into the parent plant now. And they are crowding underneath the parent plant. So I think it's about time that I separated them. All of this have thick stems as you can see and they fulfill the conditions that I mentioned a while ago. Yeah, I might be doing a lot more of these. The main motivation behind this is that I need to separate them now while it's their growing season. Because right now it would be the fastest time for them to grow their own roots and I need to separate them now because if I ever decide to sell some of them at least they will already be established by then. Speaking of sales, Check out my shop, that's seriscapades.com slash theplantsshop with dashes. I still have some plants on sale, so make sure to check it out. If you're within Australia, within the non-restricted states, then I can definitely sell you my plants. That's it for this propagation update, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye! Special thanks to my Patreon supporters, that's Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Lorena Enoti, Camila Baez, Linda Leal, Gwen Ott, Jesse May, Q2, and everyone else who pledged on Patreon. Thank you so much. And finally, you can check out my Instagram, that's at Seriscapades, and I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag DailyEcheveria.